Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Mind Map. Today's topic of discussion is weather and climate. First of all, we will discuss about weather versus climate. Then we will have a look at some terminologies, types of fogs, types of clouds. Then we will discuss about precipitation processes, forms of precipitation and lastly weather forecasting. First of all, let's compare weather versus climate. Weather refers to the state of the atmosphere over an area at any point of time. Weather changes quickly, maybe within a day or week, but climate changes imperceptibly and may be noted after 50 years or even more. Climate refers to the total of weather conditions and variations over a large area for a long period of time, that is more than 30 years. The elements of weather and climate are the same, that is temperature, atmospheric pressure, wind, humidity and precipitation. You may have observed that the weather conditions fluctuate very often. On the basis of the generalized monthly atmospheric conditions, the year is divided into seasons such as winter, summer or rainy seasons. Now moving on to some terminologies. Isohyte. It is a line on a map which connects points that have the same amounts of precipitation in a given period. Isobars. These are lines on a weather map that join places of equal pressure. Isotherm. It is a line drawn on a map or chart joining points with the same temperature. Isohull. This line connects the places of equal duration of sunshine. Isoneph. It is a line on a map connecting points that have the same average percentage of cloudiness. Humidity. It is the amount of water vapor in the air. Absolute humidity. It is the measure of water vapor that is moisture in the air regardless of temperature. It is expressed as grams of moisture per cubic meter of air. Relative humidity. It is the amount of water vapor actually in the air expressed as a percentage of the maximum amount of water vapor the air can hold at the same temperature. And specific humidity. It is the ratio of the mass of water vapor to the total mass of the air parcel. Now let's discuss about different types of fogs. Advection fog. It forms due to moist air moving over a colder surface and the resulting cooling of the near surface air to below its dew point. Radiation fog that is ground or valley fog. Under stable nighttime conditions, long wave radiation is emitted by the ground. This cools the ground which causes a temperature inversion. In turn, moist air near the ground cools to its dew point. Upslope fog. This type occurs when sloping terrain lifts air, cooling it adiabatically to its dew point and saturation. Steam fog. In northern latitudes, steam fog forms when water vapor is added to air that is much colder than condenses into fog. It is most common in middle latitudes near lakes and rivers during autumn and early winter. Frontal fog. Associated with frontal zones and frontal passages, this type of fog can be divided into three types. Warm front prefrontal fog, cold front postfrontal fog and frontal passage fog. Now let's discuss about different types of clouds. While clouds appear in infinite shapes and sizes, they fall into four core types. Kiro form. The Latin word kiro means curl of hair, composed of ice crystals. Kiro form clouds are whitish and hair like. There are the high wispy clouds to first appear in advance of a low pressure area such as a tropical system. Cumulo form. Generally detached clouds, they look like white fluffy cotton balls. They are usually dense in appearance with sharp outlines. Stratoform. From the Latin word for layer, these clouds are usually broad and fairly widespread, appearing like a blanket. They result from non-convecting rising air and tend to occur along and to the north of warm fronts. Nimbo form. It is a special rainy cloud category which combined the three forms cumulo plus chiro plus stratus. It is called nimbus, the Latin word for rain. The vast majority of precipitation occurs from nimbo form clouds. Noctilucent clouds are rare high altitude clouds that can only be seen under specific conditions after sunset as thin wispy blue or silver streaks. The name noctilucent is derived from the Latin words nocto and lucent which translates to night and shining respectively. 
Now let's have a look at precipitation processes. We will discuss two primary rain formation theories, collision, coalescence process and ice crystal process. Collision coalescence process in warm clouds where all of the cloud droplets are liquid, the collision coalescence process is the primary mechanism responsible for precipitation. This is thought to be the case especially over tropical oceans. In this mechanism, cloud droplets collide and coalesce or stick together. For collision coalescence to begin, a cloud needs to have a wide distribution of cloud droplet. Second is ice crystal process. Outside of the tropics, the ice crystal process of rain formation is the primary mechanism producing most of the world's precipitation. The ice phase process occurs in cold clouds or clouds with temperatures below 0 degree Celsius with supercooled water. The ice crystals become freezing nuclei upon which the supercooled water can freeze. This process also creates snow. Now moving on to forms of precipitation. First is rain. It is the most common form and occurs when water droplets in the atmosphere become too heavy and fall to the ground due to gravity. Drizzle Fairly uniform precipitation composed exclusively of fine drops very close together. Drizzle appears to float while following air currents but unlike fog droplets, it falls to the ground. Snow Snow is formed when water droplets in the atmosphere freeze into ice crystals. The ice crystals grow larger as they fall through the atmosphere and join together to form snowflakes. Sleet is formed when snowflakes fall through a layer of warm air and melt partially, then refreeze into ice pellets before reaching the ground. Sleet can be dangerous because it can create icy conditions on roads and sidewalks. Hail Hail is formed during thunderstorms when updrafts of warm air carry raindrops high into the atmosphere where they freeze into ice pellets and the process repeats. Hailstones can be as small as peas or as large as grapefruits and they can cause significant damage to crops, buildings and vehicles. And Groppel Groppel is similar to hail but formed when snowflakes fall through a layer of supercooled water droplets and become coated in a layer of ice. Now lastly, let's discuss about weather forecasting. The weather forecasting simply means prediction of weather conditions comprising air temperature, humidity and nature of sky that is cloudiness and precipitation. The prediction of weather conditions is related to atmospheric research and is becoming more significant because all human activities are affected by varying weather elements. India has a complex and diverse weather system with multiple factors such as the monsoon, cyclones and regional climate affecting weather patterns across the country. The India Meteorological Department is the primary agency for weather forecasting in India with a network of 16 regional centers and over 400 field stations across the country. The IMD uses a combination of observational data, numerical models and satellite imagery to generate weather forecast. Satellite imagery provides a real-time view of weather patterns and helps forecasters identify and track weather systems. Now it's time for the practice questions. First of all, prelims based question. The seasonal reversal of winds is the typical characteristic of equatorial climate, Mediterranean climate, monsoon climate or all of the above climates. And now May's question, discuss the meaning of color-coded weather warnings for cyclone-prone areas given by India Meteorological Department. So that's all for today. Stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for watching.